In this video, I'll show you how you can make cutouts of the simple cubic unit cells. We'll start with the actual simple cubic lattice itself. We're going to use our default cube and we'll quickly rename it to simple cubic cube. Very creative. We'll start by hitting shift A, adding in a UV sphere, and then hitting control one to add in a subdivision of one. We'll come over to modifier properties, apply that, and then just quickly move this out of our way, making sure to right click and shift smooth. We will then return to our cube and we'll come down to particle properties. Add in a particle system and we'll make it hair. We're going to use eight for the number corresponding to each of the eight vertices of this cube. And for source, we'll change from faces to verts, making sure to uncheck random order. For render, we're going to come down and change path to object. And for the object, we're going to use that sphere. We will then uncheck show emitter and we'll also come down to viewport display and uncheck show emitter there as well. Now, what I would like is for each of these to sort of intersect and almost hit each other, filling up the cube. I'm going to adjust the scale here to about 0.252 because I know that's going to give me the result that I'm looking for. And if you use default settings, this will work for you as well. Now I'm going to come back to the modifier properties and I'm going to convert this particle system. When I do that, you can see I get eight new spheres and they're intersecting with my simple cubic cube. So I will hide that in the viewport. I'll also come up to this little funnel or filter and then I will turn on the camera and make sure that I can also disable this in renders in case I actually wanted to render this scene. Now, if I wanted to join all of these and do the Boolean option to cut it down to just the cube, if I try to join any of these two spheres right now by saying, let's choose this one, holding shift and clicking that one, and then hitting control J, you can see these are retaining some of the memory they have of being part of a particle system. So it's adding in a bunch of extra spheres. We'll control Z to undo that. And the way that we're going to solve this problem is we will simply select all of the spheres here, and then we'll come to object relations, and we will use make single user of object and data. And we'll do that for the selected objects. Now we can hit control J and all of these will combine into a single object, which we are going to name the simple cubic unit cell. You'll notice right now that the center of mass for this whole object is right here. And so if I try and rotate, it's going to rotate around this object. I want it to rotate around the center. And so to do that, I'm going to right click and set origin to geometry. So it's now in here and you could see I would be able to move it like this. I'm right clicking to reset and because I don't want to rotate right now. And now I'm going to actually cut this out. Because I used a default cube, I can simply shift A and add in another default cube to be my cutting object. And we will call this cutter cube. Now I'll grab my simple cubic unit cell, add a modifier, namely a Boolean, and the operation that I'm going to choose is intersect. For the object, I will use my cutter cube, making sure that it is hidden in the viewport. Now you can see I have the simple cubic unit cell nicely laid out. I'm going to go ahead and apply this modifier. And to fix this shading that I have on the corners, I'm going to come down to object data properties and to normals, and then I will check auto smooth. And just like that, you can see we now have the simple cubic unit cell. And we can rotate this around or scale it or move it. So we'll go ahead and move that off to the side. And now we'll do the same thing for body centered cubic and face centered cubic. Shift A, add in a default cube, and we'll start with body centered cubic. I'm going to hit Z and come to wireframe view, tab into edit mode. And with one, so I hit one, so I'm selecting vertices. I will select two vertices on opposite corners like that. Now F to join them, right click and subdivide. You can actually run into par problems with particle systems if you have these sort of free floating vertices. And that's something I didn't address in my last lattice tutorial, but will in this one. So to make sure that you don't run into that problem, simply holding down shift, click one of the corners. You see I've deselected that. Now I'm going to hit shift again and I'm going to select this bottom corner. I'll hit F and I'll join these so that I now have a face. Faces are a lot easier for Blender to recognize, so it will definitely now see this vertice. We'll tab out of edit mode there, and we'll come and we'll add another particle system. Again, a hair, and this time it will be nine for the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine right in the center. Again, we'll change from faces to verts, uncheck random order, and we will still render as an object using that same starting sphere. We'll hit Z and drag back into solid view, and we'll do the same thing, uncheck show emitter in both the viewport and the render, and we'll drag that scale up until it's roughly intersecting uh, about 2.19, 2.20. 
the body centered sphere in the center is actually going to intersect with the edges before the edges can intersect with each other. Again, we're going to come back to the particle settings, convert to this, but before we do that, we'll name this the BCC cube. So we will now convert. We'll choose all of these spheres again, remembering to come back to object, relations, make single user of object and data for the selected objects, control J to join, We'll hide our BCC cube to get rid of that overlap, and we will change this to the BCC unit cell. Once again, we will come back and we'll add a Boolean modifier. Again, intersect, and for the object, we can still use the same cutter cube. So we'll do that. Again, we find ourselves noticing that the object center is off on the side, so we'll right click and we'll choose origin to geometry. And to fix the shading, back down to Object Data Properties and Auto Smooth turned on. Make sure that the modifier is applied, and then you can go ahead and move this one out to the side as well. Last, we'll very quickly do the FCC unit cell. Shift A, add in a cube, right click, subdivide in edit mode. And then we'll come up to select, checker deselect, and hit Control i to invert that selection. We'll come down to Object Data Properties, add in a vertex group, call it FCC Points, and go ahead and click Assign. Now we'll tab out of edit mode, come to the particle properties once again, add in a new hair particle system, this time with 14 as the number. We'll choose Verts instead of Faces, uncheck Random Order, Render as Object, the same sphere that we've been using throughout, you can see these are all over the place, but we're going to come right down, unchecking Show Emitter as we go, and we're going to go to Vertex Groups, Density, FCC Points. Now you see we have our 14 spheres right in place. Again, we'll come back and adjust that scale, just bringing it up until it's right about where we want it. I'm pretty happy with this. Coming back to the modifier properties, we will rename our cube FCC Cube. Convert that part, we'll convert that particle system, hide the FCC cube, object once again, relations, make single user, object and data, selected objects, control J to join them all together, which doesn't seem to want to be playing along. Select all of them, control J, there we go, now we've got it. So we'll control J to join them all together, and then we'll re rename this FCC unit cell. Once again, we'll come back, we'll add in a Boolean modifier with the intersect operation, still using that same cutter cube. Now this is an interesting area where you can see I only have faces and not the inside of that cube. Now I do want those hemispheres, and so the way I'm going to solve this is right click again, origin to geometry. Now I will just grab this, hit S and scale just the tiniest bit, you barely have to move, and those faces will appear. We're going to auto smooth one more time to get the result that we're looking for. And finally, we can come back, apply this Boolean modifier, and just like that, we now have our simple cubic unit cell, body-centered cubic unit cell, and face-centered cubic unit cell. Now, anyone who's done any kind of chemistry or material science will probably recognize these from their textbooks. So if you wanted to make these for your own presentations, figures, etc., etc., here they are. And with that, thanks for coming out. As always, have yourself a great old day. And if this was at all helpful to you, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends and colleagues.